Well, the Hospital Portless Pride and Dignity, Stop the New World Order. Welcome to her Panwo TV. Welcome to this part three of uh, my uh, video, Return to Cullum, which, um, as the title suggests, is me returning to the Cullum Laboratories. Um, this uh, movie is a follow-up to my feature-length documentary, F Nuclear Fusion Power, which you can see. Link in the description box, as always. And um, this, in this part three, I'm going to show you some of the literature I was given when I was there, and I'll explain the lecture I was, uh, I was, uh, before I went on the tour of the uh, of the um, laboratory. I was given a lecture by a, a guy. The guy, it was the guy Chris who came and picked me up from the um, front entrance and sort of like gave me, um, sort of let me in without my ID, which I was talking about yesterday. A uh, very nice man, as I said. All my worries were alleviated. This is the visitor. I picked this up at reception. It's just a visitor guide, visitor guide to the Cullum Science Center. Like um, there's the Cullum Center for Fusion Energy. It's kind of like takes up most of it. But the science, it's a science center. So there's other laboratories doing other things in there. Like they've just developed their own a new form of computer monitor. I was looking at. So this is um, this is the this is the uh, Cullum Science Center. Now uh, this is just the emergency plan. Um, First thing you see, oh, <laughs> and uh, basically how to get out the hell out of there. Um, just t talking, it's very similar to my hospital actually. Um, during the emergency main gates, do not leave the building. It's all like a fire drill, things like that, you know. Um, here's a map of the place. It's an old airfield, it used to be part of the fleet air arm during World War II. There's the main entrance where I went in when I was filming yesterday, uh, before, before and after. Um, well, I was sort of like up the hill beforehand, just around the corner here. But I filmed myself coming out of that area here. These are the what used to be runways. This big here, this this pink bit here is the jet, is um, is the jet facility, which is the JET Joint European Taurus. I'll be showing you the photos later. Um, and I said there's other businesses here, which is green. There's other things. It's, and um, the yellow is the mast experiment, which um, I also saw as well as. Um, the uh, the jet there's two different nuclear fusion experiments going on there jet which is the old foot original one started in 1982 and mast which is the new one started i think in about 2000 um on the other side it's just it looks a bit scary safety stuff here you know wearing protective clothing i had to wear a hard hat at some point um i didn't get a photo of myself doing that but um um basically especially as radiation beryllium beryllium is, is these is one of the things they use for uh, radiation insulators Oh, sorry, the, the lining of the vessel in the fusion tokamaks. Um, fire or bomb alert? I don't want to blow that place up, but there, there you are. Um, this is this is just no different to my hospital, really. It says radiation there, but that doesn't necessarily mean there's, there's going to be a bomb going off or you're going to fry. It, just, it could mean the same thing, you know, a radio radioactive emitter like, um, like the X-ray machines at my hospital. I also picked up this from reception. Somehow, for some reason, I've got three of them. Um, what's this? Oh, it's just like a bookmark-type flyer. You can get it on Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, YouTube, and Flickr. Oh, that's it. And on the other side, there's nothing on the other side. Well, this is the interesting bit. I pick, got picked up a couple of brochures here. That's what they look like. They look like brochures. Um, this is the European Fusion Development Agreement, for the, and this is JET. And basically, JET is, a, is an experiment which is run by several different countries in the European Union. And there's their website, jet.efda.org. Um, and this is a picture, of course, of that EU flag, which I'm not all that keen on, of course, as you know. But the other side, of course, is the inside of the Taurus, the, the vessel, as they call it. And basically explains how it works here. Um, it's the energy of the sun. Now, this was this was actually given to us in the lecture. Let me just find, get the notes out. So I was going to bring this up later, but I'll bring it up now. Um, the lecture that we were we were given. Now, you know what is what exactly is it? Fusion energy, and it is like I say, it's it's where you get these. Um, as I explained in the first film, it's where, you, where two atomic nuclei, hydrogen, usually fused together rather than fission where, where heavy heavy nuclei with many many hadrons are broken apart um the the um fusion actually actually fuses very very simple atomic nuclei together um it does this by you have to um heat them up as explained enormous it's in the sun the pressure has to be enormously dense there has to be a lot of pressure and there has to be a lot of heat 
And what happens is because these because the nuclei are different sizes, when they come together, they give off more energy. The because there's an imbalance in these nuclear forces. He explained it to me. I didn't. It's hard to explain. I can't remember it all myself. He, there's some sort of imbalance in the nuclear for, fuel forces when the two nuclei come together, and that's what the energy comes from, which creates the heat which they can use. Um, and there's this little chart here which talks about um, the energy released in nuclear fission. There's a little graph here and how big it is. And it goes and this is the it goes up there in nuclear binding energy and atomic mass. It's it's basically it explains how it works. And um, the tokamak, as I explained in nu my nuclear fusion film, is a device that can do that by generating enormous temperatures inside it. And using deuterium, this this uh, fuel, an isotope of hydrogen, very very common. Um, there's millions and millions. There's a lot of it in just normal water. Massive amounts in normal water. Um, this is this is a plant. This is interesting, right? Because I didn't cover this in the first film. This is eta, which means the next step in Latin. And and demo, right? Eta is in construction now. In it's in the south of France, France at a place called Cadarache. As I, and um, this is going to be their power plant, right? So and this is how it works. It's actually good. They're actually going to build eventually. A prototype power station that's going to charge the national grid. There's your tokamak in the middle, and this here is lithium. It's surrounded by lithium, and that is actually the heat exchanger. So the deuterium goes in there. This is the compartment which, which protects, keeps the radiation out because there is radiation involved. I'll explain later. Lithium blanket, right? That's there. That's what the heat exchanger is. The heat from the from the tokamak, from the plasma inside the tokamak. That is that fusing deuterium um, is released into the lithium the, tr the tritium and helium is siphoned off there as the waste product and the helium goes into helium is very very is, is harmless anyway um, I don't really, can't remember what they did with the tritium but the interesting bit is this is simply water right it's, it's, it, this is simply a boiler it's it's exactly like any other power station, as I explained in the nuclear fusion power film, it just simply heats up this water in a boiler and that runs this turbine which, which spins this uh, dynamo in a generator and it charges the national grid. And so ITER is going to be, ITER is under, under construction now, as I explained in part three of nuclear fusion power. Um, they're gonna, what they're going to do is they're going to build another experimental tokamak, a much bigger one, a huge one, even bigger than jet, it's going to be about 200 feet high. Which is going to be, it's going to be a much more efficient and much more effective at burning, at creating plasma. Because at the moment they can only create, they can only create plasma for, you know, fusing plasma for about a few seconds at a time. And it's also going to test this heat exchanger. And then when that works, they're going to build demo, the demonstration power plant, plant, which is going to create, it's going to regularly produce a net, net electricity profit on top of the. On top of what they already put in, it's going to produce a net electricity um, over unity, um, tritium self-sufficiency. I don't know what that means, and high reliability of operation. I mean, one of the big things you've got to remember is this: this whole system is it, it all works. It's all it's all functional, but um, the, the problem is, it's the engineering, massive engineering over challenge, challenges that massive engineering challenges that have to overcome. And here's a timeline, you see. It actually all began in 1973 when they started designing it. Then they, that's when they started the column. The column site was chosen in 1977. 1979, the work began. So the concept is not new. It's been going on a long time. It's been under development for 40 years already to get where they are now. And they've made enormous progress. Um, jet operates, that's when they start in 1983. 1986, new heating systems installed. Um, jet plasma temperature exceeds 100 million. 1988, first plasma current, a plasma current, and 1998, controlled release of fusion power. First time ever in the world that's done. And it carries on there, it's different for various setups. And um, jet starts, and then it goes on there right to, to 2003. And this is, there's some pictures here of the various things. That's the jet, 
Um, there's the control room. You'll see photographs of all these things in a minute because I took some photographs when I was in there. Um, that's the building. We're inside that building there. That's the jet again, and that's the inside of the vessel there. So I, I'm, I can't see the viewfinder, so I'm sorry if my camera wanders off a lot in these things. And um, jet facts. I don't know what these necessarily mean. These are various stats you can get here. You can get them all on the website as well. Um, these various graphs. It's confined. This is the, 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 the rise. Basically, it's how, how well they've done in their success in terms of financial participation of different countries and other things I'll have look for those in detail and here's the, another brochure I had fusion a clean future research at the Cullum Center for fusion energy yeah see oh and it's all it's all very this looks very nice doesn't it increasing energy demands and concerns over climate change and limited supplies of fossil fuels Mean that the world needs to find a newer, cleaner way of powering itself. Nuclear fusion, the process that provides the sun's energy, can play a big part in our sustainable energy future. Around the world, scientists and engineers are working together to make a clean energy from fusion a reality. At the forefront of this research is the Cullum Centre for Fusion Energy, where the UK's national jet fusion programme coexists with the JET, the world's largest fusion device, which CCFE operates from scientists from around Europe under the European fusion development agreement look at that nice picture there of the sun and there's a picture of the the earth there um so there's a picture of a city lit up at night you know why do we need fusion energy and it basically what it, what this basically says is it talks about the situation we're in now now um, as you know i don't agree with all of this and i'll, I'll go into details at the end but i've already gone into details in the first film about why i don't what i don't agree with about this but um, I'm just going to repeat what they said here. Um, we have a rising population, um, and a modernising world. That's countries countries which were formerly in the third world are now becoming more modern, like India. You know, um, China, of course, is this emerging superpower, and at the moment it's, it's enormously expanding in terms of its in industry and development. Um, and everyone wants more fuel. Uh, at the same time, you know, there's this climate change problem. Yeah. Okay, as I said, I don't agree with all of this. Um, and, um, you know, and interestingly, the guy doing the lecture said, he said, well, some of you might not agree with climate change. And I thought, well, that's quite something, isn't it? As an aside there. He actually said this. Um, maybe he looked at my film, I don't know. Um, Chris, his name was, and he was a nice man, Chris Warwick. Um, you see here the population density of the Earth, population growth. Um, population is rising. Um, and... The idea is there needs to be some form of replacement energy, and there's all sorts of alternatives like wind and solar, wave power. Um, none of those really can can do the job alone. So nuclear fusion seems to be the sort of like, as far as these people are concerned, it is the it is the answer. It's a, it's the creative and dynamic and perfect answer to all this. And the advantages are no at atmospheric pollution. No greenhouses, gases, or acid rain. Abundant fuels, deuterium and tritium. Um, as I say, deuterium is very common in just water. Tritium is very, very common as well. Lithium, extremely common. Um, an efficient way of making energy, just one kilogram of fusion fuel produces the same amount of energy as of 10 million kilograms of fossil fuel. Inherently safe. No, no serious accidents likely. Even the worst kind of accident, an unlikely accident, would not... Be that serious no long-lived radioactive waste all ir all ir all irradiated materials can be safely disposed of within 100 years no long-term environmental burden economically competitive the cost of fusion generated electricity is predicted to be comparable to fossil fuels or fission generated electricity all right. fusion fact the amount of lithium contained in a laptop battery combined with less than half a bathtub of water can provide enough fusion fuel to supply the average European person's total energy needs for 30 years. How fusion works. And it just talks about um, what I've just explained to you, the, how atoms, fu atomic nuclei fuse together under very, very extreme heat and pressure. Well, in terms of, in terms of this on Earth, it's just pressure because, it's, so it's just heat because we can't generate the pressure on Earth. Um, and it's, all this hot plasma has to be kept away. It can't touch anything else because it's so hot it would just immediately um it's just if it touched anything it would burn whatever it touched not badly but um, it would still 
because it's very very tenuous it's almost a, it's, it's just a hundredth of a gram dissolved into that entire space as i explained in the in the first film but um it would immediately cool down so that it would right jet see this is jet as you see here this is the big big tokamak the big tokamak it's in in the ccfe jet holds the world's record for fusion power at 16 megawatts achieved in 1997 the world's largest tokamak and there it is some of the people mast right mast is a smaller device it's but it's it's actually a spherical tokamak in other words it's not donut shaped it's spherical and this is a far more efficient because you just need you know you, it's easier to control the plasma because there's just this one sort of magnet there solenoid and there's these toroidal magnets around it and um, this is a, designed to be a scale model of ETA. Um, so it's, it's um, it says here, the Mars fusion research concentrated, most fusion research concentrated on the so-called conventional tokamak, which is um, donut shaped. The spherical tokamak pioneered at Cullum is now being explored. More compact, it's smaller than, than it's about a quarter of the size of Jet. The plasma is held in a much tighter configuration, more like a cord apple than a car tire. The shape of conventional tokamaks. One advantage is that the magnetic field needed to hold the plasma to keep it stable is much less in a spherical tokamak. This means a substantial gain in efficiency and better plasma performance for the engineering cost. Whilst the first fusion power stations will probably be based on more mature conventional tokamak design. Okay. The first spherical tokamak, the start was designed at Cullum and um, approval was given for a larger successor MAST Mega Amp Spherical Tokamak. MAST started operations in 2000 in its objective to test plasma physics in this tight configuration with additional heating. An impressive range diagnostic equipment had to be brought to new insights in how plasma behaves and um, basically what it says here is ETA is going to be a f enormously huger sized version of this it's going to be a hundred times the size of mast there's a picture there of mast with a couple of the engineers and scientists nearby um working with industry materials at cullum um there's nothing there that's particularly dangerous and you can't nothing that can be used as a weapon if terrorists get hold of it um there's they use things like i said deuterium very common Lithium, tritium, beryllium, and tungsten as well. They have these two blocks of material. Beryllium's lighter, and you can pick it up. It's a small block. Tungsten is enormously heavy, and you pick it up like that. It's like lead. It's like lead. It's about the same weight as lead, I think. Um, and there is ETA. This is ETA. It's going to be huge. And there, there's where they're building ETA. I showed you this, didn't I? In, I showed you this in, in nuclear fusion power, and then we filmed there. But that, this is this is ETA, and this is about. Mars is just tiny compared to that, and a person standing there would be like an ant. This is this is about 200 feet high. This is about 200 feet high from top to bottom. It's huge. That's ETA. Okay, now that in there. I mean, I talked about it in nuclear fusion. There's a solenoid there. There's the the magnets around the side, and it's all in there. Right. And there's the back page there. Um, all about it there. Um, I learned about. I'm surprised actually. They say it's going to be. They are still going to have to char charge it. It's not going to be free energy, but it's. You know that's that's quite um that's interesting. You know, it's not going to be free energy. It is going to cost money. They say it's comparable with fission power, or with um, fossil fuel generation. Anyway, I'm now going to show you the photos in the next part of this video. So um, I'll uh, I took quite a few photos while I was in there. Hospital porters, pride and dignity, stop the new world order.